OTSD affects nearly 7% of the U.S. population, and despite there being several medication and therapy options out there, an estimated 40 to 60% of people with PTSD don't respond to these types of treatments. So more and more attention has been given to the use of MDMA in treating PTSD. And in 2017, the FDA granted breakthrough therapy designation to MDMA-assisted therapy for PTSD. So what does this mean? It means that the FDA has agreed that this treatment could have a significant advantage over other current treatment options out there, and that research studies can now be expedited and fast-tracked. So by the end of this video, you're going to be up to date on the latest breakthrough research that's looking at whether or not MDMA is helpful in treating PTSD. So let's go. So when talking about MDMA and PTSD, there are two studies that you need to know about. The first is the most recent, phase three, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial. So the gold standard in medicine. This was published in May of 2021 in the journal Nature Medicine. This study took 89 patients with PTSD, and we're not talking about just one form of trauma being studied here. The PTSD could be from a variety of different causes, so we're talking combat, abuse, sexual trauma, etc. And these patients were randomized to receive either MDMA or placebo, okay? And then both groups also received manualized therapy that's specific for those with a PTSD diagnosis. Treatment took place over an 18-week period, and patients received three monthly doses of 80 to 180 milligrams of MDMA, or placebo, okay? And this was over an eight-hour period. Then, with the therapy side of things, patients received an additional three 90-minute integration sessions that were spaced one week apart, and these were meant to help patients process their experiences. And so how do they go about measuring the results? The main thing researchers looked at when evaluating the effects of treatment were reductions in PTSD scores on the clinician-administered PTSD scale, aka the CAPS, and the results were nothing short of remarkable. Researchers found that a whopping 88% of those receiving MDMA experienced a significant reduction in their CAP scores. And what's even better is that the effect size was found to be large at 0.9. So you might be wondering, okay, that's cool, but how does this compare to the current standard treatments for PTSD? So when looking at SSRI medications, and remember, both sertraline and paroxetine are the two meds that are FDA approved for treating PTSD. The effect sizes are typically somewhere between 0.3 to 0.6 so more in the small to medium range. And I mean, I can't stress this finding enough. This is unreal, right? An effect size of 0.9 is larger than any other previously identified PTSD pharmacotherapy. It's just crazy, okay? But remember, to really directly compare MDMA to other therapies out there, head-to-head -head studies would need to be conducted. Still though, these early findings are just incredible and really, really promising in my mind. So in addition to a reduction in CAP scores, researchers also found that depression scores and overall functioning improved in those taking MDMA. And not to mention, 67% of patients in the MDMA group no longer met criteria for PTSD by the end of this study. I mean, it's unreal. Now, what else was cool about this study? The first thing is that the benefits in the MDMA group were seen almost immediately. And not only that, they accumulated over time and they persisted throughout the study. And no treatment out there works in this manner. The next thing is that MDMA was well tolerated, with the most common side effects being decreased appetite, nausea, sweating, feeling cold, and muscle tightness. Researchers found no major safety issues in those in the MDA group. Okay, so now that we have a better understanding of the most recent placebo-controlled trial to be published, the next study I want you to know about is the most recent meta-analysis, and this was published in April 2022 in the Journal of Clinical Pharmacology. What this study did was compile the results of five different randomized double-blind studies, okay, that were published between 2011 to 2021, and they looked at the impact that MDMA had on PTSD symptoms. And the way they did this was by assessing changes in the CAP scores from baseline, and then they also looked at the percentage of people who no longer met the CAP score criteria for PTSD at the follow-up period, right? So we are looking at a reduction in symptom severity on top of evaluating the number of people who achieved remission. What they found was that there was a 22 point difference seen when comparing MDMA treatment to the placebo treatment, and that those receiving MDMA assisted psychotherapy were more likely to achieve a statistically significant reduction in CAP scores than the controls. Not only that, more patients in the MDMA group 
no longer met CAPS criteria for PTSD at follow-up when compared to the placebo group. Again, this is just incredible. All right, so what does this all mean clinically? So my view is that this is a very real and potential treatment option that could be available to patients in the near future, especially with the results being seen relatively quickly and then persisting for long periods of time. Like I said before, this is unlike any treatment option that is currently out there for PTSD. On the other hand, it's important to keep in mind that the studies completed so far while promising have small sample sizes. So I'd like to see more studies be conducted with larger amounts of people in them. And then also it would be great to see some head to head comparisons such as MDMA versus paroxetine or MDMA versus sertraline so that we can see how MDMA treatment stands up directly against the current FDA approved medication options. Now that you're up to date on the most recent MDMA literature and know the benefits that are being seen when treating PTSD, Click that top video to find out more about the latest research on psilocybin and how it's being used to treat those with depression.